Gary is going to take us through our first oil change on our 2020 Ram 5500, which happened last year. And we're going to share whether it's worth doing the oil change yourselves or going to the dealership. You're going to need to go underneath. All right, change oil on 5500. They don't have a hex head or a, an Allen head. They got just a square drive. So you can just use the square drive off a 3 8 inch ratchet. Make sure you're going in the right direction. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Oh, <laughs> this is the drain pan. This over here is the transmission. You don't want to do that. <laughs> Not unless you're intending to oil do it. Oil change 101. Okay. How many quarts is this? 12 quarts. How do you do that without getting yourself all messy? No, uh, you don't. Ooh. Rag in one hand, clothes on the other. So I just loosen it up, take it out by hand. And of course you're gonna get pretty ugly. Like. So I kind of get my... Yeah. I don't normally wear gloves when I change the oil because I like to feel the oil with my hands. Yeah. But with a diesel, you probably should because your hands are going to turn black. Now what I do is I just let that drain. Man, you're killing me. So also to help drain the oil from the top, you just got in the habit of just taking this cap and just making sure it's loose. So that way the air comes off the top. Later. Make sure I'm going in the right direction. So I'm torquing it to about 35 foot pounds. So at least I know now I got it good and tight. So we're good to go. All I do is just make sure I don't have any oil drips to keep it off the ground because that black oil gets all over everything. It's kind of a mess. All right, on to the oil filter. You got your roll of towels. I'm gonna grab some. This is gonna be a messy job. Because I don't know you want to be there. Why? It gets kind of oily. Okay. You're gonna get wet. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to get wet. All right, what I'm using for right now is a 10 inch extension and a filter cap. I'll have to, we'll put that in the description. All right, so I put that cap up there. Now I'm going to try to make sure I'm going in the right direction. Oh. Ain't breaking my cap. Oh man. Usually when they put them on the factory, they do it not the way you're supposed to. They get glued on there. Oh man, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, let's see if I don't want to borrow Dad's long range. Freaking filters. All right. Plan B. I'm going to use a longer wrench to get more leverage on it. Oh, I don't think that's going to break it. Ah, nope. All right. Plan B. I think that's C. So in theory, that should work to take that off. In the future. Now, however, we're going to have to do. Yeah, this is one to take them off of trucks. See how many times I can do this. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's moving. It is moving. Now that I've loosened it up with the other one. I got the rope. And it's gonna take all freaking night. Just change the oil filter. How you doing, bro? Uh, trying to make a career out of changing oil. 
Lucky I don't pay you by the hour. <laughs> okay. So bring it out, slide it down. So it wasn't as messy as I thought it was going to be. Normally they leak all over the place. So I pre-fill on the engine oil. So I just kind of fill it up. It's gonna absorb it. So one of the things I do have to keep myself from preventing dumping the oil out is putting this plug. And what I'm doing now is just using it here so that I can keep that area clean with the oil in there. And then now I got a handle, I can just carry it underneath there. All right, so you wanna look up there? This is uh, where the oil filter goes. You need to make sure that you wipe around that outside shiny ring so that the seal makes a good seal. Gotta but, lube that baby up. All right. All right. I just take this cap off and I already pre-filled pre the filter with some oil and then I pre-lubricated the uh, seal with some oil. And then now I'm just gonna stick that up there. All right, I just hand tightened it a little bit. I'm just gonna give it a slight snug just because I don't want oil to leak out. That's all there is to the bottom end other than filling the oil at the top end. Okay. So. <laughs> so all I'm doing is I'm gonna fill it up. And that's all there is to this. Get some 12 quarts of oil. Yep. So I'm showing you the location of my fuel water separator. This one is located midship with my 22 gallon fuel tank. Mine is located conveniently right here on the frame. It's easy to get to from the side of the car. So what I did first was I opened up this cock stop here. I let it drain out into a pan. So what I'm loosening up is this cap here. So this stuff does get a little messy. Hopefully you can see this. As you can see, as I'm turning it, I'm getting a substantial amount of diesel fuel. Well, now if yours gets stuck up there, that's what you gotta do. Just pops out. So this one doesn't look too bad. So I'm gonna clean that up and get it ready to go. All right, so in the bottom of the cap, typically on these, there's gonna be a little bit of residual fuel in there. All I do is just dip my finger in Get and I wet the fuel? And, and then put some fuel on this o-ring and then when you're done with that now you're going to take this end and stick it in the cap you're going to hear a, a hefty snap and it should be popped in there really tight so that's the new one this seal that I took off it comes with the kit and I put this seal on this groove here and what I'm going to do is just put a little engine oil on that seal just so that it doesn't stick now I'm all set to put that back in. Okay. Hey, fancy meeting you here underneath the truck. You're just laying on the job. So the one thing to watch for is this sensor here. It's your water sensor. It's just two probes in there. And then the uh, top of this is keyed. As you can see this, it's keyed. So you wanna watch for that probe and try to get Okay, try to get that lined up. There we go. And then always start these by hand. Try not to do it with a wrench first. To get this off, it was really tight, so I chowdered that hex a little bit. I used a six point socket on it, still chowdered it up, so I'd recommend the six point. But I'm gonna hand tighten this till all of the threads are all the way down. You'll feel it when it's done. and watch it all right make sure your drain is closed 
That's for the fuel water separator. Run to the fuel filter. Alrighty. So there's the yellow valve. And so what I'm going to do is open it. I'm just going to use a screwdriver. And I'm going to open it and drain fuel out of the fuel filter housing. Hopefully. Well, I've turned it. But I don't... Oh, there's stuff coming out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It ain't coming out like it's supposed to. No? Why? Well, I put a do job up here. Okay. To try to get it. But it didn't come down that way. Oh. It just went all over. Nice. Well, at so, least it's not oil. No. But now I gotta clean up my axle. It's piddling. And yes, you will get a lot. It's a lot of quart. Alright. So, down here, you're gonna see an eighth and eight, eighth inch plastic nut up on top. Now, this is the very first time that I'm taking this off. And it is on there very, very tight. Because they don't see the need to lubricate anything when they assemble it. I'm using my eighth inch socket, a swivel, a 15 inch extension, and an eighth uh, half inch drive ratchet in order to get this to turn. Now this is the extended handle so that I can actually get in there and put some torque on it. So once it does come loose, and I, I have broken it loose already, I have towels around there to try to catch some of it. And then uh, I just grabbed one of these cheap bags. I'm gonna try to stuff it in there before it gets diesel all over everything. So I'm gonna hope that I can get this out of here without getting too much diesel anywhere. Which probably won't work, but okay, we'll give it a try. Okay. All right, so I'm just opening this up. It's got the seal, and I'm assuming that's got to go in the cap, but I will double check. So, something I discovered is that right here, it's very hard to say, is an O-ring. You need to take the old one off. As you can see, it gets rather loose and squishy. So you're going to need to take that off, and we're going to replace it with a new one. What I've done is I've taken the O-ring here, I've put a coating of oil on it. Unlike what the manufacturer did, but because it came out of there completely dry. Anyway, um, I put a coating of oil on there to help seal it up and so it makes a decent seal and doesn't get pinched. Hopefully y'all can see what that looks like, but I got that O-ring down there. Ready to put the filter in. As you can see, the bottom of that is oval. So, and it fits up with the, mates up with the center piece in there. That is also oval. So, it should just go in one way. How you doing this, guys? Oh, man. You can see I got the filter in. Now, it did take a little bit of twisting to get that oval piece to fit in the oval piece down below um, so it kind of fit in kind of slid in twice kind of sort of but it, it kept turning it until it kind of fit into the notch and then it slides all the way down so if it's still sticking up in the air it's the wrong way so if those little tabs are flush it's going the wrong you're not all the way in so you can kind of see that it's got to sit down about a half inch to an inch inside the filter housing and then now I'm just gonna put the cap on so, next step, got the cap on. I just kind of have it hand tight. I'm gonna tighten it down now. I'm gonna tighten it down to 30 newton meters.
So even if it took Gary two hours to do the oil change, boy, this is still well worth it. Okay. <sighs> 